Welcome to another episode of In The Zone. I am your host, Chris Broussard, and <laughs> what a show we have planned for you. First off, a great interview with none other than Meta World Peace. He had some never before heard stories about Kobe Bryant. He's got a new book out. He told us some about that. He's an author. He writes sci-fi erotica. You're going to hear. I mean, it's just too good to be true. You got to listen to this great interview with Meta World Peace. Of course, we got my man Jason McIntyre on board for another episode or segment of Knockdown J. But as always, we started off with a top five. And what we're going to do for the playoffs is every week, we are going to give you our top five postseason player power rankings. That's right, top five postseason player power rankings. We're starting it off right now at number five with Clay Thompson. All due respect to Kevin Durant, who's run this show very well without Steph Curry, six and a half assists a game and all that. But Clay Thompson has been the man, averaging 29 points a game, shooting 70% from the field in the first two games, including 71% from three-point land. In game two against the Spurs, a tight game, a game the Spurs look like they might be ready to pull off the upset. In Oakland, Klay Thompson drained 16 points in the fourth quarter. He has been out of this world. Klay Thompson, number five. At number four, Paul George, otherwise known as Playoff P. I, I don't know. I don't know where that came from. I don't remember ever hearing that. Mello and Russell don't remember hearing it, but whatever. He was playoff P in game one against the Utah Jazz. 36 points, seven rebounds, eight three-pointers, eight of eleven from behind the arc against the second best defense in the NBA. Now look, Utah is a defense that only gives up nine three-pointers a game to opposing teams. And Paul George by himself drained eight threes. That was a huge win that he led them to. Now OKC is flying. And look, I think they're going to do some damage in these playoffs. Paul George, playoff P, PG-13, number four. At number three, none other than the beard, James Harden. You know the numbers, 44 points, eight assists, seven three-pointers, and in the fourth quarter to beat Minnesota in a tight game, 12 straight points. And here's the thing, Harden had to be that good. He had to be that dynamic just to get the win because his backcourt mate, Chris Paul, and then his other backcourt mate, Eric Gordon, really didn't show up. They combined for only 21 points, 15 below their combined average for the regular season. Chris Paul has six turnovers, including a bad one late that could have cost them the game. They combined Gordon and Paul to shoot two for 13 from the three-point line. So if it wasn't for Harden's heroics, Houston could have been in an 0-1 hole. That's why he's number three. At number two, that's right, Victor Oladipo. Now, Victor Oladipo went into the King's house and was the best player on the floor. He led the Indiana Pacers to a game one upset by playing tremendous basketball. Look, as great as he is, he's only a 37% shooter from three. Not horrible, but not a marksman. But in this game, he dropped three three-pointers in the first quarter to lead Indiana to a decisive 19-point lead, and the game was really over by that point. He ended up with 32 points, four steals, six of nine from three-point land. I know he probably just upset LeBron, but still, right now, this week, Victor Oladipo, number two on the player power rankings. And at number one, Anthony Davis. You got to give it to AD. He goes into Portland against the third seeded Blazers, who everybody is raving about. Everybody thinks could be a spoiler in the playoffs, and he instead becomes the spoiler himself. 35 points, 14 rebounds, 
four block shots. He was phenomenal. Then 11 points in the fourth quarter as the Blazers are trying to rally. He gives New Orleans its first playoff victory in seven years. And for him, it was the first playoff victory of his career. AD, he was third on my MVP ballot, and he is going to win it one day maybe. He put on that type of performance in game one, and that's why he tops this week's list of the postseason player power rankings. All right, we're here with Meta World Peace. What's yes, up, brother? Yes, what's going on with you? Look, first, before we get started, I, I want to just ask you about this. I know you're playing in the Big Three this yes. summer, but you're going by Ron Artest. Yeah, Is, yeah, yes. So are you changing your name back or no, what? I'm not changing my name. Ice Cube was like, hey, it'd be cool to have Artest in the back of the jersey. And... I'm like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> so it, was just, simple, yeah. it wasn't that deep, nothing, nothing nah, like that. He okay. Just, he just because people cool. remembered you, because you hadn't changed. You changed the Meta World Peace. 2011. Had, yeah. So you won your title as Artes. As Artes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. And I was hoping to win one as World Peace, but <laughs> the team started to break down. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 All right. Well, look. First of all, you you got a new book coming out. Yeah. And people don't know. I mean, you've written several books. I, like have an a, author. I, I have a couple books, man. I have a sci-fi erotica. <laughs> sci-fi erotica. <laughs> I do have one. It's called Dream Thirty Seven. Well, um, how'd that do? Well, no, I didn't. I didn't put oh, it out. It's not yet. out. You, yeah, you've I didn't written put it, it out yet. Yeah, that so book is done. So it's So I mean, to, what you can tell us? Yeah. <laughs> what is sci-fi erotica? So the thing it was about the reason it's a sci-fi erotica because of the story and so it's, it's science fiction. Oh, yeah. And the story was about uh, temptation. And it was about a man who was getting these, uh, was, was lusting about another lady. Uh -huh. And then they got into this uh, dream and um, it was affecting the marriage. So but was, they were only in the dream. It was a, it, the dream became a reality. Okay. You know, and then, um, and so um, <laughs> I wrote it because um, it was like, don't go for the temptation. But okay. I wrote it, I wanted it to be fun, yeah. and, it's, and it's very, and it's very, um, you know, graphical. Okay. You, you know, you, so. were you a big... What were some of those, I don't even remember, those <laughs> novels that are graphic, sexual novels? Were yeah, you yeah. into all that? You read all that I, stuff? Or I you wasn't, just did your own thing? I just thought, like, you know, when you're telling a story, like, you want to be, like, blunt. I don't want to, like, hide <laughs> things because it's, no, it's not fun. And even, even in my book, even in my um, autobiography, like, I told Triumph, like, listen, I want it to be, like, blunt and just tell the stories like it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good, man. That's not, so are you going to release that, Dream 37? So Dream 37, like, I'm going to do my autobiography first and then, like, later release okay. that book. That's been done for four years. And then um, wow. I have another um, um, thriller. It's called The Idealist. So yeah. you wrote it? It's, it's written? It's finished, yeah. Really? And you wrote it yourself? I or you went, tell with him? a guy named Josh with, Silverman. So you kind of share with him mm -hmm. your thoughts and then? Yeah. Wow. It's a thriller. So yeah. like a mur murder mystery type? Um, basically, um, it's a group that is, um, has all these ideas on how to take money from really rich people. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's good, It's pretty man. fun. It's a fun book. I enjoyed it. That's, that's, that's all right. So I'm, these both sound good, but let's get to your book yeah. that you just released. You're just releasing called No Malice. No Malice. My Life in Basketball. Obviously, that's a play off the Malice at the Palace. Yes, yes. Uh, My Life in Basketball or... How a kid from Queensbridge survived the streets, the brawls, and himself yes. to become an NBA championship. So, I, a champion. So, I want to ask you, when you look back at your life in basketball, yes, what makes you the most proud? There's, there's a lot of things that make me the most proud, but one thing that I hold on to a lot is the year I got suspended, not because of the suspension and the attention that it brought to me, the year that I was having. Oh, you, you were, it was early, but oh, you man. were playing like MVP. Even before that, I was playing really well the, the year before that. But yeah, that year I was like really, really good. And, um, and I always took that Ron Artest and placed him in New York City. And when I was a kid, I always wanted to play in New York City because that's where I'm from. Yeah. And I'm like, how can my city not have a championship? Only a couple when Phil Jackson was there in Clyde. Yeah, early. Right. And, but, you know, so... I'm like, wow, I can actually say I would have been really amazing in the garden. I should have been in the garden. The New York fans wanted me. Everything was in my favor, just that I wasn't there. 
So that's something that I can be proud about. Yeah. But it's something that only I could experience because it didn't actually happen. You know what I'm saying? So were you, when you were playing your early years, because obviously the New Yorkers were upset that they didn't draft you. Yeah. They drafted Frederick Vice. Right, right. Instead good, of you. good guy, good guy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you were in Chicago, then you go to Indiana. Right. During that time, were you thinking, man, I wanted to be with the Knicks. I wish I was with the Knicks and stuff. It, so what happened was my, fav- my favorite team was Chicago. I'm from oh, New York. really? So I'm New York pride. Because of Jordan? B.J. Armstrong. <laughs> really? Was my favorite player. <laughs> now nah, you got to explain that. Why? You know, you know you're young. I like B.J., but why? You know you're a young kid. <laughs> B.J. wasn't a bad player. Nah, B.J., was, he was the bomb at Iowa. And he was good I, in the NBA. He was good, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when you're a young kid, you latch on to something, and you're watching TV, and you just like somebody, and B.J. Armstrong was the guy <laughs> that I liked. <laughs> you know? And, um, and then, obviously, Jordan was on his team. Like, wow. Yeah. So that was my favorite team, the team I played with. In, in uh, NBA Live. Okay. But I'm from New York, so I always had that conflict. Like, if I had a chance to play for anybody, it's going to be New York. Yeah, yeah. But I went to my favorite team, which was the Bulls, so I just forgot about, <laughs> I forgot about New York City. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so. And then, but, but also, when I was, um, I was going to sign in, um, to New York City right before uh, Isaiah left. Yeah. So I was going to be in, the prime, in my prime, and I, and I, I, I was going to go to New York City, but then, Isaiah left, and Donnie got the job. Yeah. And I had the incident in Indiana with Donnie, so I reached out to Donnie and said, hey, um, I would like to come to New York, but that he, would have been too would, much. Because you had a good relationship with Donnie. I, I still have a decent relationship but with But he just felt like... It was a lot, man. Move. It was a lot. Yeah. That whole brawl, that, not, not even a brawl, just me personally. Yeah, yeah. I've done, I've done way more than that brawl. Oh yeah, I was you, ahead. Do you feel like people? Oh, you talking about every negative stuff you disruptive. did before? Disruptive. <laughs> well, I remember because I covered the Knicks at that time, and I remember I think an incident where you had you guys had played in the garden yep. and you threw like a monitor after the game. Cameras and, and monitors. Or yeah. So so, <laughs> w- w- I was gonna ask you. This might this leads into the next question. What is your biggest regret when you look back? Is I guess all that type of behavior. No, the, the biggest, it's, it's no real regret because when I look back and I, and, and I go back to when I was a kid and then how I was in the NBA, you know, um, I had no chance, man. So it was, yeah. It, it I was. had no chance, <laughs> you know, from, from the household to how you're raised, to how you're educated, to your va- values and morals, you know? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I had no chance, and I and I still made something out of it. What you you like I said, you talk a lot about mental health mm-hmm. issues, and you went to therapy. Yeah. Do you still do therapy? And whether you do or not, what have you learned about the challenges that you had with mental health? Yeah, just um, sometimes you can have this addictive kind of side to you. Sometimes you can have depression or anxiety, such as Larry Sanders. Yeah. He would have um, anxiety, you know, and that's why he needed to smoke to calm him down. Um, Me, I would do that and drink. Okay. You know, um, so I had all I had, and that had a lot of wounds that wasn't closed. Like as a child, going through a lot of things that in the the environment. Yeah. And then you, and then you try to cope, and you build these addictive habits, whether it's spending money or whether it's drinking alcohol. Or, or, or whether it's like sex, you yeah, know, yeah. and and none, and they all could be you could be dependent on these things, and now instead of just you know addressing the issue, you know you, you got to just cause another problem, oh, other, yeah. and that's what happens with a lot of like professionals and people always trying to be number one or people who have so much pressure and they try to cope with other things. You become addictive, <laughs> you become addicted to the other thing you you know you thought that was helping you. Yeah, you know. Um, so I understand that now, and the best thing to do is to be content and be happy, and to do things you love. Do you still, is, are there things you do, do you have a routine to keep yourself balanced mentally? Uh, yeah, I, I still like to see therapists and address things, you know, when I can. I just think it's important, yeah. you know, for you to take care of yourself. You got to take care of yourself. And, um, you know, um, basketball is something I like. And then I like, uh, and I had, it's a good question. Because when I was like, I'm not retired yet, but I'm, I'm at the end, and damn near retired. <laughs> so you might, you might come back and play. How old no, are I you know, now? I, like, if, if I had a reason to play, I can get in shape. Yeah, yeah. And play. If somebody told me, like, in June, we want you to come to training camp, 
then I can get in shape. But like my last two years with the Lakers, they told me like in August. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, I still made the teams. Longer. Yeah. You know, I was, yeah. I, I was taking somebody's spot who was like at the end, so I could do that <laughs> easy. But um, you know, um, I'm not I'm not playing no more. And I had to ask myself, what do you want to do? So I said, okay, I, I'm a philanthropist. I love basketball. Um, I was a math major. I had to ask myself all these questions to see like, what do I really love? Not like, do I want to do movies or do I want to produce mm -hmm. movies? Like, what can you do? What do you love? And um, I went back to school for digital analytics business analytics. I was thinking about getting my Series 7, but that was too much, so I just chose analytics. Um, and then I um, kind of just put everything together, so now I'm doing a, a, a sports platform <laughs> that involves right. things that I love and philanthropy, you know, so that's, 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 what, I, that's what I've been doing uh, lately. You saw DeMar DeRozan, you mentioned Larry Sanders, DeMar DeRozan, Kevin Love, they came out and talked about mental health. Um, how big of an issue is that do you think in professional sports like a lot of players yeah. battling stuff like that you see it every day you see the stories of the, the uh Len bias yeah. for one yeah you know great player you see the stories of um guys trying to cope um and uh going out partying and and, and wasting all their money and you know um not having that right the right people around you or having maybe an addictive habit. Mm -hmm. um, you, and you've seen the stories before this day's NBA, it's cleaner now, but you see, you hear the stories from way back when. You know, um, it's been going on for a long time. Guys been having problems for a long time. Um, the NBA has been very supportive for a long time, but it's just coming out. But imagine being in the NBA's position and you wanna show that you're supportive with mental health. Yeah. And you wanna say, I'm helping this guy, helping that guy, but maybe that guy don't wanna be exposed especially back then, because the media would call you crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. This guy's on Zoloft, or this guy's yeah. on that. This guy, right? The media wasn't as sensitive you know, to that situation as they are now. You helped, you, you opened it up a lot yeah. when, when you talked about it after the finals. Yeah, absolutely. You know? I mean, I that, that really changed everything. Um, so uh, what is it like to play in the NBA? Because we have a lot of... You know, people stereotype, oh, it's just an endless stream of parties and women and yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah. And you mentioned how much free time you have. I don't yeah. think people realize. I mean, if you practice four hours a day, yeah. then you got the whole day. You got money galore. Yeah. Like, so talk about what it's like playing in the NBA. I mean, it's like the practices for me was great because I knew that when I'm in practice, that's where I get a chance to play and just have fun. Because when I leave, I don't know what I'm going to do next because I'm not like that locked into my family at that, at that okay. young of an age. Yep. You know, uh, but the NBA is great. And I get some people like Trenton Hassel or Kevin Ollie. You know, these, these, these are like guys that were just stable, you know. Yep. Elton Brand. And I'm like, wow, how are you guys so stable? <laughs> I used to be like, admired. It's like, how do you do it? Yeah. <laughs> but then you get other guys just like want to go out or, or, or maybe live in a different lifestyle. And um, everybody's different, and it's all, and that's why you see so much passion in the game. You know, you, people don't understand like you know where that passion comes from, or why a guy is how he is, or maybe he acted out one game. Mm -hmm. You don't really know like what that person is going through. Yeah. But to play in the NBA is great, great platform. You pay a lot of money, um, and you're just doing something you love. Yeah. Yeah. What What are some revelations from your new book, No Malice, that might surprise people? Um, well, my story's been out there, every single one of them. <laughs> I don't know if people's going to be surprised, but I think some of the backing stories with the family. Okay. Um, it's things my mom and dad talked about in the book. Oh, um, so, you, so they're in it too? Okay. Th th they're in the book. Okay. Um, it, because I wanted it to be more real, you know, and instead of getting the news on TV, you actually get a chance to hear the full story without it being censored. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to worry about, what is it, the FDC or something? <laughs> yeah, the FFC. FFC. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we, I, I told the, the, the right, I said, I want everything to or be. FCC. Don't. <laughs> FCC. I'm FCC? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, do not censor anything. <laughs> you know, I want people to kind of get the stories and I want people to go away reading the book, being able to connect with the book. Is there anything about the malice in the palace that, you know, we don't really know that, like... Yeah, a lot of things is in the book. Um, and, I, and this is not, like, 
they I didn't want this to be like no tell all book. I'm yeah. not trying to I mean I'm not I'm not that person. People on blast yeah, I'm not yeah, I'm not yeah. the type of person, so you're not gonna get good information about what was going on in the Lakers locker yeah, room yeah. or <laughs> <laughs> But it was more about me and and I, I was giving out information on myself. So with the brawl, one of the things was the bet. Um the bet. A lot of people don't know about the bet. And when the guy raised his hand, when I got hit with the cup, I yeah. ran into the stands. Because that's the only person I saw, I'm like, you definitely hit me. It could have been something totally different, but I was 100% sure that that was the guy that hit me. If you didn't know who hit you, you, you think you wouldn't have went up there? If I didn't know who hit me, I probably would have been like going crazy, like, who did it, who did it, yeah. who did it? Okay. But I'm like, that got to be him. There's no other reason for anybody to be raising their hand. But he wasn't the one that hit me. It was the other guy that hit me that was next to him. Well... The reason he raised his hand was, was because he bet John Green, who hit me with the cup, $50 that they could hit me. Wow. See what I'm saying? Wow. So when John hit me, the guy that raised his hand lost the bet. He was like, oh, you did it. Yeah, yeah, I owe you yeah, $50. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and as that, he's, I'm coming up. He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Whole face yeah, change. Yeah. And then the guy that hit me is like this. He seen me running. And he's like, I didn't do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you watching, right? <laughs> so I run right past his back to the other guy. I wasn't going there to punch him, and I didn't want him to escalate like that, but I did want to kind of grab him by, not quite choke him, yeah. but more like the shoulder area. Okay. And just kind of shake him yeah. for a long <laughs> period of time. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah. You know, and um, because I was super upset that I got hit with that, that, you know, I was so mad. Like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. You know, and then, um, and then, um, then, then they took me off the guy John grabbed me. So I'm thinking like, all right, maybe he's grabbing me because I'm doing too much. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm like, all right, cool, get me off this guy. And um, he punches me in the face from behind. You know what I'm mean? saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had no chance. <laughs> and the, what am I going to do about that situation? Yeah, huh? then it just escalated. It was all, yeah. what, what was your, I guess, before and then after, what, what was your relationship with Ben Wallace? I never... Um, I didn't like Ben Wallace. Okay. Never. I don't like anybody. When you playing? Hell no. Okay. I hate every single person. Before I get to a game, like my thought process is, all right, who's in the arena and who do I hate? And I say, okay, I hate everybody. <laughs> Kids and everybody. Okay. <laughs> um, the coaches hate the guy. I build up so much hate, and then, and then sometimes it was hard for me to come down. You know, so yeah. my Elton Brand, my best friend, yeah. Lamar Odom, when I asked him, did, did I ever talk to him on the court? No. <laughs> I don't have friends. That's just how you did it. That's just how, that's how, that's how he was brought up, right? Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely I didn't like Ben Wallace um, because um, he was a hell of a player. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and their team was that good. So I just, I just, I hated them. So going forward, you guys didn't develop any type of relationship or anything after, after the, the brawl? Yeah. Yeah, good, good question, man. After the brawl, it put a lot of things in perspective. I did say hi to him when I was in Houston. He was in Cleveland as a game, but that... Because yeah. that, that brawl put a lot of things in perspective for me. Yeah. Y'all yeah. never talked about it, though. Y'all never... We never talked, talked about it. It would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. It would be very That'd interesting. That'd be a great uh, talk show on TV or something. Yeah, yeah. I always wanted to fight him um, after that because people said I, I was remember. scared. So I wanted to fight him in a boxing ring. I remember you challenged him. Yeah, you. I wanted to... Did he ever... I know I mean, he was probably busy with the family. Yeah. I was still kind of, I was just salty that I got suspended <laughs> <laughs> for, for 72 games and lost a ton of money. Yeah. <laughs> do you work out in boxing or anything? You ever do any of that? Yes, that's, that's a good question because so right before the brawl, I was, um, I was training to be a professional. I wanted to turn professional at 35. I didn't really? want to, yeah, I wanted to turn, well. So once you were done playing, you were Well, right before turn. the brawl, I was trying to retire. I don't know, people, well, I called the NBA because I was going through a lot. So I called the NBA. And then um, before the brawl, before the brawl, okay. and I'll take you even before that, <laughs> before I signed with Indiana, I was trying to sign overseas in Europe and Greece. I didn't even want to play in the NBA. Why? Because I wanted something different. I wanted something different, you know, and then, and nobody would help me get what I want. They wanted what they want. If I say I want to play in Greece, that means I want to play in Greece, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So nobody would make the calls that I needed to be made. Yeah, your agents, they, they like, what are you talking said, about playing in Greece? So anyway, then I, um, that, before that season, I tried to retire. My grandma passed away in October. Everything's piling up. So I tried to retire. I called the NBA office and said, hey, how do you go about retiring? Wow. I called Chris Chin, and then um, 
Then they was like, you know, you sure you want to do that? <laughs> you know, um, and then I, I got the papers. Well, actually, I never got the papers. I don't know how to retire. But then by that time, I spoke to my team and everybody talked me into staying. Okay. You so know, you had told them you you were yeah yeah we, we 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 spoke and I was out and, and I was like this year I just need I just need I just need a, a fresh start I need to clear my head I need to be around my family I need to work on my family yeah. you know because <laughs> I knew like I was gonna be here for the long for the long haul so then um, that didn't happen I'm playing well that season and my dad reached out to Angelo Dundee because my dad was a boxer he said I right, son I found you a trainer because we was talking about boxing so I, I spoke to Angelo Dundee. He said, all right, we're going to work on it. We're going to work. And then um, by the time you're 35, you're going to be really good. So we, we was, we was going to start working. The brawl happened. When the brawl happened, I'm like, okay. Because I, I was going to announce that by the time I'm 35, I'm turning professional. <laughs> right? Um, and because it takes that long for you to be a good boxer. I know scared. boxing. Yeah, yeah. You can't just turn. You just roll up in You can't just roll up in boxing. Yeah. Right? So, um, and it's something I wanted to do for my dad. My dad was a boxer. So when the brawl happened, I'm like, dad. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. If we should continue. We should announce this, okay? Because I just got into a big problem for fighting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and this is gonna be a bad look. Yeah. So then, uh, and then Angelo Dundee passed away. You know, um, and then uh, so we just kind of let it go. Just let it go. You brought up a couple things. You you said some people you wanted to fight Ben because some people thought you were scared. That was a little yeah. Because y'all didn't, you didn't go at him. Why, why didn't you guys, why do you think you didn't fight him right then and there? I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> it's like, you know, and then I let other people get in my head, you know. At, at that time, I'm young. I'm like, oh, you said I'm scared? I'm not scared. Yeah, 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 yeah. It don't make no sense. But, um, but at that time, I'm like, okay, I just 13 more NBA last year. First team this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I let this one go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't yep, know. That. Yep. I don't know. I yeah, wanna, yeah. We up 24. Yep. Yep. Y'all, y'all were having man. Y'all would have been Which a great team that year. <laughs> Second thing you brought up is how long it takes to develop as a boxer. Yeah. I don't know if you know Floyd Mayweather. You, mm -hmm. you okay? Now you know he's talking about MMA. What's your thoughts on that? I mean, I say if it's going to be a hundred million dollars and he gets knocked out, and this, that'd be the last fight. He's never been knocked out. It's people that's been knocked out way more than he has, and comes back. So if he happens to lose and walks away with one fifty, I'm it's, fine with that. You think it's worth it? I think it's worth it. He's he's never been hit. Like what? What are you gonna break an elbow? I get it fixed. <laughs> like <laughs> so, you would do. He should do. But I would love him is there it. any chance he could, you know, win? And learn how to fight MMA. To me, that's that's a lot. Now I saw the report that the rules would just be no elbows, no takedowns. It almost be like boxing in the <laughs> octagon. Yeah. And then he might be able to win. Well, Floyd obviously he calls the shots everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to see him do it. It's different, you know. It's inspiring from a boxer. It's just so inspiring. It gives a kid out there that maybe wants to box and do MMA. It opens it up to something different. I would love to see it. I hate to see him lose, though. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it don't go in his boxing record. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to today's NBA. I got some questions for you. Who's your MVP this year? James Harden. James Harden, Hands absolutely. Down. Yeah, I voted for Harden. Because I, I, some people saying LeBron. LeBron had a great year, but come on, it's Harden. Le 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 this year is definitely um, Harding. The, what, what he's doing, what, what he has, he deserves MVP. Yeah. Okay. Who's your pick to reach the NBA Finals? I say uh, Warriors, and I say um, maybe uh, Philly. Really? So you you lost faith in Cleveland? They just don't have the team. I I mean now LeBron. I feel bad. I feel um I feel a certain way betting against LeBron. I was gonna say yeah. I feel a certain way betting against yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. He's that good, but you know Toronto's playing well. But can they stop Ben Simmons? I don't. I don't know. Philly is tough. Ben Simmons looks. to I've said it many times. He looks. He's the closest thing I've ever seen to Magic Johnson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is. He is. He reminds me of. I said LeBron because I never watched Magic play that much. Yep. I saw Magic at the end. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um, but then as I watched tape on Magic, I'm like, oh, wow, Magic was really good. Oh, Magic was, people don't yeah. understand. I mean, his passing wizardry was just completely yeah. unmatched. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no question. But, yeah, Philly, Philly is tough. All right, you tweeted the Knicks are looking for a new coach. Yes. <clears throat> you tweeted that you would love to coach the Knicks. So what's your, what would your pitch be to the Knicks? Why, why should they hire well, you? Well, for one, when, 
when that when the job came up, I didn't know about this job for one. <laughs> when I seen people names, I'm like, oh wow, the Nick job is available. There's only a couple jobs right now I would change my life for. <laughs> you know, um, the Knicks is one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Saints, and it's only for if the job is available. I don't want nobody's job. Like, I don't want to, somebody has a job and they say, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I would fire this. No, I don't care. Yeah. I'm not even interested. Yeah. But the job is available. Um, my brother has an agency, the art test agency. Um, so I said, hey, Isaiah, you know, try to reach out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, you know, um, yeah, I want to, I love coaching. I, I, I coach all day. That's what I do. I, I got a teams. I got like four or five teams I'm coaching now. And, <laughs> and, and uh, my pitch would be, um, uh, you know, h hiring a good staff. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Um, playing a lot of defense and running, <laughs> and shooting, a lot of shooting, getting up a lot of shots. You know, um, I do feel like defensively, even though it's not a defensive league, but you have to play defense to win. Um, and people remember me, remember me for defense. Oh yeah. But I was able to play a little offense. Yeah, yeah. And I was able to play a team game. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like I have, I have the package, and that's not knocking any other coaches. Only, I, I hope one of the other coaches get the job. I'm happy for them. Mm -hmm. But if it's available, yeah. Imagine Ron Artest winning a championship in New York City. <laughs> you want to see a city get light on fire? Oh yeah. If you really, <laughs> I mean, for me, it's like a couple of people tweeted, "You only take the shot." I think I think somebody tweeted to take the shot, and I, I I like to take the shot. If I see something available. How am I not going to say it? Mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. It's an opportunity. <laughs> Did you hear any, your brother hear anything back from the Knicks or anything? No, nah, because, you know, um, I don't have experience. I do, but yeah, not, yeah. it hasn't been shown. Yeah. You know, I, I, and then also it's other coaches that's been doing it. And that's how, you know, yeah. head yeah. coaches, they're doing a great job. And, I'm, you know, good luck to every one of them. I hope they do. I hope one of them get it and have a good time and, and win in New York City. Yeah. That would make me happy. Um. I watched, well, let me get to Phil Jackson. You played for him, obviously. Great coach, obviously, 11 rings. But I heard Phil didn't, like, practice. He would. He wasn't doing a ton. Is that mm -hmm. fair? It's fair. <laughs> what was, so what was it like, a Phil Jackson practice? See, Phil was focused on triangle. Okay. And the triangle is basically a defense. Um, and the reason it didn't work now is because the game's changed. I, and I always felt like, he should have started the triangle a little bit higher. Yeah, you expanded for the three-pointer. I thought he should have. Right? Not, not, not necessarily expanded to the three-pointer, but just started it at half court. Okay. Like, you're trying to score right away. Everybody in position, you want to get the quick bucket. You don't want to get at the three-point line and then start the triangle. Not in today's game. Okay. You got to start it in transition. You know, um, and, but Phil was more into the triangle, and it takes you two years to learn the triangle. New York City didn't have the patience. Also, I thought he could have started it a little higher. Something he taught me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not making this up. It's something he taught me. <laughs> You know, um, and, um, and then also he could have um, shifted the triangle and made it um, shifted a little bit into the elbow, Sacramento. He yeah. could have had that a little bit, just move, move the guy up a little bit to open it, spread out the floor. Yeah. You know, so, um, but Phil would work on the triangle, and, and the triangle was actually a really good defense. Now, how do you, when you say defense, what do you mean? Because like? on defense, basically you want to break the other opponent down. So you want to keep the body moving. It will wear them down. It wear them down. down. They, can't, okay. they can't get back and have that energy on offense. That's why it's important to have movement. That's why James Harden early wasn't winning because he's doing his thing, but the other four defenders are just playing offense mm -hmm. full speed while your other four offensive players got to play defense for the whole game. It could be mentally draining. <laughs> you, you mentioned getting into people's heads as a defender. Do you see any of yourself in Lance Stevenson? Uh, I, n not really because... Um, a little bit. No, I do. I do. We're both from New York. Yeah. <laughs> he from Brooklyn. Do you know him? Queens. I know. Lance. I, okay. I spoke to him a while ago. That's my boy. Okay. Um, and, um, and then, like, in terms of, like, doing whatever it takes to win, um, I think he had better moves than me. Okay. Um, I might have had better jumper, like, in terms of when I was in my prime, you know, just yeah. straight one dribble, two dribble, pull up. Yeah. Um, defensively, we both hustle. Um, but in the summertime, like, I work on my defense. You know, when I was in my prime, a lot of people don't see that. But before I pick up a ball, I mean, I'm sliding for an really? hour. Yeah. Really? That's why I was able to have the endurance. Wow. Because I'm, like, in the gym working on defense. Wow. Yeah, there yeah. probably wasn't many players doing so I don't, that. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't many players. And that's when I was, you know, stopping everybody. And, like, the year I got defensive player of the year, um, Rick Carlisle told me that, don't you know, small forwards average six points against you for the whole season? Wow. That was, like, the average. Wow. You know? would, would you have ever blown in somebody's ear? 
I'll probably, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what's the craziest thing you did or said to somebody to get in their head? I mean, I pulled Paul Piss shorts down in the game. <laughs> you know? Um, what did, did he say? What did he say to you? He just kept playing. Paul was focused. He focused on the game. He just curled and hit a three. With, with, with his his, how, how low were his they shorts? Probably like mid, <laughs> mid hamstring. <laughs> Mid hamstring, definitely. <laughs> um, the only thing I would do, I wouldn't really talk or do a lot of that type, okay. but I, I was very physical. And yeah. so, <laughs> and I was always trying to get position. I was always trying to get So if you're trying to post up, and if you're, if you're a guy that normally posts up and just get to your position, you're not getting here today. <laughs> you're going to have to go around. And um, sometimes uh, the point guard on the other team, <laughs> It's a fun stories, man. Sometimes the point guard on the other team won't even look at an all-star player, his all-star. Because you just Because I'm guarding him. They just say, <laughs> <laughs> they go the other way, man. <laughs> Could you tell when you have broke a guy, like, you, oh, I got him now? Yeah, when they're not moving, they don't want to go nowhere. They, they just don't want the ball. <laughs> that's, that's... They don't even care about the, <laughs> about the ball. Yeah. Um, we talked about Lance trying to get in LeBron's head. Is that really the only chance you have of stopping him to, to try to get in his head? Or the, the, the key to LeBron, to beating LeBron, is play basketball. That's it. You're not going to do any of the other stuff and beat him. You got to be your best. Okay. You're not getting in his head. I mean, it's not. He's looking. He had triple double yesterday. Mm -hmm. So they won. But I think Lance should just play and play and have a good. That's it. And just win. Yeah. And that's it. Play hard, make great plays, and still play aggressive on LeBron. Mm -hmm. Still do all that. But don't just let it be about that. Let it, it's about you. That's who you are. Yep. You know, you're a good player. You, you were with the Lakers, obviously. Um, do you, this young core, Brandon Ingram, Kuzma, Lonzo Ball, Julius Randle, how good can that core be? And I'm going to tell you why I'm asking that. Paul George, we know, wants to go there. And my feeling is if I can get Paul, if I get Paul George and I know that's going to get me LeBron, yeah. then I'll do it. But if it's just Paul by himself, as great as he is, and he's right. great, I don't know that I'd max him because I'm wondering if any of these young guys might become Paul George right, right, or right, close, right, right, you know right. what I mean? And then you're going to have to pay them eventually. So what, what's your feeling on that? Is, well, Kuzma's going to be great. We know this. He's going to be Similar to Ben Simmons, without the passing or without not the passing, without the uh, point He'll guard be a position. Score. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. He's very good. Then you got um, Lonzo's gonna get better, and he's gonna be a winner. You feel like he had a good year? Yeah, I think he had a good year. His percentage was really low, but I think his um, control of the game is like you know is is great. Yeah. Um, Ingram's gonna get stronger, and he's a team player. So Ingram's good because he don't need the ball. Yeah. And he can is score. He, with it, which one, and then you, you Randall, throw him in there. Yeah. Do you, which one you feel will be the best? Um, you know, I would say um, it's hard to say. They're so, they all so close. But if I had to pick one to be the best, I would say Ingram. Okay. I think Ingram has the most potential. I think he's even younger than Kuzma, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think he is. Because yeah. Kuzma was, I think, maybe did Kuzma a couple years in college. Kuzma stayed three years. Yeah. Stayed three years in college. Um, maybe four, three or four. Yeah. And then obviously Randall's like playing amazing. Mm -hmm. They won 35 games this year. Next year that's, that should be 45 or 50. Yeah. You know, so it's like, so, you know, you got to pick your poison. You so know, would you, you max, go, if, if you only can get Paul George, would you max him or would you stay away and let these young kids develop? Well, for me, I grew a relationship with these young boys and being with them for two years. Um, and I would just keep them together. Okay. okay. Um, I feel like they're going to be good. Um, now... Lou Aldang was there, and I think I want to see him be more of a veteran uh, leader. Teaching and stuff. Okay. I want to see him around more. I think he is around more. I saw some things happen. He wasn't around. Yeah. But, but, you know, um, but I think they have a really good team. I think they got some good vets, you know, and I think they can get to 45, 50 next year. So what are your thoughts on LeBron going there? I mean, if, if you want LeBron, he's a great player. If he wants to be there, you, you got to entertain it. Yeah. And LeBron yeah. says, hey, I want to be a Laker. What do you say? No. <laughs> you know, so I, I don't know. But would could that stunt guys' growth? Uh, it depends where LeBron is at in his career. Is he still one to get the points and the rebounds and, and the minutes? You know, and then who time does that mess with? Maybe it doesn't mess with anybody time. Or, or maybe you move somebody to the bench, but then they're still playing a lot. Like Kuzma, maybe Kuzma goes to the bench or yeah. something. Yeah. But he's still playing a lot. 
Um, I can't see your growth being stunt with LeBron. Maybe a little bit at times. Like, in, a, in, a, in crunch situations, LeBron's going to want the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I felt like Iman jumping, uh, growth was stunning a little bit. Okay. But on average, you're, you're going to look good playing with LeBron. Mm-hmm. You yeah. have a chance to compete. I mean, but now, now do you want to be, you know, do you want to be around LeBron or do you want to be the man or, you know? Yeah. It's, it's like, it's like if, what, if, what if any of them want to be the man, that's right. obviously not going to be the case if he's there. It's, and, and, and we don't know, you know. It's just, it's just hard. When Kyrie Irving. Yeah. He, he he shined with LeBron, you yep, know. Yeah. Um, but then he wanted out. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, LeBron, if you were in his shoes, where would you go? Like, there's all this talk about where he should go or might go as a free agent. I kind of would like to see LeBron stat in Cleveland. I know he lives in LA. Yeah. You know, I, I kind of would like to see it because I don't know. He's he's building something there. Um, it's not a big city, <laughs> no. so you know um, I know he's doing a lot of big things, but he's making a ton of money, so he don't really need to be anywhere. He's LeBron James. He's still a business mogul, even if he's not in LA. Yeah, even if he's not, you know. So I don't, I don't know. I, I, I like what he did for that city. I, I envy that because, like, as a competitor, you want to be the best, and I mm-hmm. wanted to do that for New York City, mm-hmm. and to see him do that for for Akron and Cleveland and Ohio. It's like wow, like, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, you know, and I will, and, that, and he went back to get a, a, a ring for his home, which yeah. is amazing. Did you and Kobe <laughs> ever have any arguments or go at it when y'all were teammates? <laughs> what tell of us course. about? <laughs> um, you know, um, maybe in practice. Well, Kobe, he's he's he's, he's just he he was so competitive yeah. on the court in practice. So he'll talk trash. He he'll go on the opposite team of me. <laughs> you know, just to play against the best teams. Yeah. He was super competitive, and you have no choice. You know, one, one time I was so mad in practice, I just disrupted the whole practice, <laughs> right? And then we was talking, drawing, and playing. I kept going. Feels like enough is enough. Yeah. I didn't start it, but I damn sure ended it, so I just kept talking. It feels like enough is enough. I'm like, no, it's never enough. It's time to say it's enough. <laughs> y'all, y'all all suck. <laughs> right? I'm, so I'm telling Phil and Kobe how bad they are, right? <laughs> Which is like it's crazy. And um, I said, you know, if, if and then I, I said, if, if, last year we would have beat y'all before I was hit with Houston. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, uh, if y'all was playing, we would have beat y'all. Y'all couldn't beat us. So and now I'm like on Houston's team <laughs> in the Laker facility. <laughs> and Phil's like, enough is enough. No, it ain't enough. It ain't enough. I'm just keep talking. Disrupted the whole practice, <laughs> and that's you know, and that started from me and Kobe, and then Kobe's laughing like, yeah, I got him, because Kobe wanted to push my buttons. Yeah, yeah. That day, so Kobe pushed my button. Um, yeah. <laughs> Did y'all ever get in a fight or come no, close? No, no, no fights. Okay. It was more, but it was definitely like competitive. Yeah. <laughs> like y'all saw us in the Houston series. Yo, yeah. I thought that was <laughs> one of the best lines you had when you was like. Don't he know I'm around our test? You know, <laughs> when he came at you, you know. So did you, did you, but did you gain respect for him, though? I mean, you, I'm sure you had respect, respect for him for before. Kobe. But when he what, what didn't back down, like he was, you know, because a lot of guys were afraid of you. Well, yeah, and it, it, was, it, was, it was actually surprising to see somebody like, you know, always just come right back. Yeah. The thing with Kobe, Kobe is, um, he's always on the offense. So, like, when I would play against him and hit him and move him, and stronger than him, yeah. he come right back every single time. And it wasn't a lot of people that was all-stars that was doing that. And I was like, wow, this guy is so good. And he pushed me because I'm like, I want to be the best in the league. Mm-hmm. Right? And then I was averaging 11 points. Well, that's not going to get it. <laughs> you're right. you know? And then you play against Kobe. It's like, wow, I got to even be better. You know? Because um, I want to be better than like Shaq and Kobe's on the same team. Yeah, yeah. And we trying to win a ring. Like, it's, like You see the road down there and it's like, yo, you got to really be good. Yeah. So that was really pushing me to be better. And, and I felt like I was getting closer and closer, you know, um, to that. Now, one thing I heard about Kobe, I heard the same thing about Jordan, was that they always broke the triangle. Oh, yeah. And they just did whatever they wanted. So the triangle is a great offense, yeah. But they, <laughs> they, these guys did break the triangle. <laughs> Absolutely. They had to. When you they say had they had, go ahead, what do you mean they this, had This is why you have to, because look, Kobe is super confident, and if you're going to run a triangle, and Phil Jackson put this system in place for everyone, not all the time everyone is confident. You see what I'm saying? Because you don't get touches all the time. Okay. So you got the triangle, you got to stay mentally focused for the whole game. You, you can't take a rest. 
because you might be open, you got to shoot. Sometimes if you don't shoot for 10 times, you're cold, then you yeah, miss the yeah, shots, yeah. and you get, now you lose your <laughs> confidence. Yep. So with Kobe, he sensed that early. Who's not confident? Yep, like, he sensed early he'd be he'd break it. That's, he, had, he had no choice. Wow. A lot of times he had no choice. So, so Even though it didn't help us. <laughs> would you get mad when he'd break it? You would, but then he would do something so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get mad because you're not shining. Like, like I said, the contract situation, a lot of things. Yeah. But then when you're on the court with Kobe, you really forget about all that stuff. He's so good. Like, wow. Uh, Phil would get players books. What kind of books would he get you? Because this would be specialized, right, to each player? Specialized. He got me his rings. Okay. 11 rings was it? 11 rings. And um, I read a little bit of it, and then I would get mad at Phil, so I wouldn't read it. <laughs> Just to say, you know, <laughs> you tell him, your book is garbage, man. I, I, never, I never said that. <laughs> I never said that. All yeah, right, you, you brought up earlier Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. And you know that situation. His doctors have not cleared him to play. Right. The Spurs doctors have cleared him. They want him to play. What do you think about that situation? I mean, I'm a huge Kawhi fan because how he plays, and I, I, like, I wish I could have been him. His game, he would be the closest thing to you. He's I mean, his similar. personality's different, but tough defender. He's very strong. similar. Yeah, I, yeah. One, one dribble right pull up, one dribble left pull up, fade, fade, to the basket, yep. easy, defense. <laughs> it's like, yep. you know, it's kind of cool to see a team player. Um, but he's not, he's not a selfish individual. Oh, uh, man, he, 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 he definitely was better than me, though, because um, his mom was right. Okay. His mom was right. And right now, I don't know what's happening. I don't really care, but the only thing is like, wow, I don't like to hear bad stuff in the media about Kawhi. Like you know? when Tony Parker said, did you hear that? I, I didn't hear it, but I, he what did he said say? his injury was like, yeah, they had the same injury, essentially, same part of the body. And he said his injury was 100 times worse, and he came back a lot quicker. I mean, they're different people. That's one thing. They're different people, and he has a contract coming up. So the Spurs are very loyal, by the way. Yeah, loyal organization. I can see them paying Kawhi even if he gets hurt. But, you know, will they? <laughs> yeah. So I don't know the situation. Question. I'm just looking at it from TV. I watch highlights. I don't even watch games like that. Okay. And I watch the, the headlines and, you know. Were you ever in a situation where the team doctors were telling you play? Yeah. And you felt you weren't ready or maybe other doctors telling you not? Well, in my situation, I would play. <laughs> the, t the team doctors had to keep me off. Okay. Like when I got my meniscus tear in my knee, and my con it was my contract year. Okay. And we was playing against the Spurs in the first round. I got my, my, my meniscus tear. Six weeks, I, I said, I looked online, and I researched that you can come back in five days. So I went to the um, doctors. I said, listen, it says five days here. I'm coming back. You know? Yeah, what they said. And they... It, it, was, it, was, it was documented that you can come back in yeah. five days. But I was playing on a meniscus limp, wow. and, and it hurt me for two years. Wow. Do you when feel I got like my, that hurt you going forward? Absolutely. I was, I was done. Like to, When I was with the Knicks, I was still having this problem. You know, um, I was having a problem for two years. And I, didn't, was, I wasn't thinking about my contract. I was just thinking about I want to win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so, and, um, and then when I was in Indiana, I had a ligament tear in my thumb. I, you'll, you'll see some pictures. You'll see my whole hand wrapped in gauze. Couldn't even move it. Everything's connected because I had no ligaments. So I had to connect tape to make a ligament. Wow. So I, I had one surgery. They said six weeks. <laughs> I was back in seven days. Like, I'm not sitting out six weeks to put a cast on it. But it hurt me because now when it's contract time and my numbers is not right, yeah, yeah. they're saying, you only average 18, yeah. 15. I'm like, seriously? They I couldn't even shoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's interesting. The last thing, this year the referees, there's been a lot going back and forth, players and referees. What do you think about that situation? Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hear no stories. You, you wonder what's what's going on. I don't know. I don't. What happened? Well, the the refs are giving players texts. Oh, like that. You know, just because. And pl some players are saying, back in the day, the refs would kind of, they might talk to you, or you know, right? Hey, man. All right, that's enough, Ron. You know, keep it down. Or I'm gonna have to tee you up. Whereas now, they just teeing you up if you say something to them. Well, it's about time because I was the only one getting teed up <laughs> right away. I'm happy. That Finally. Because <laughs> when I was playing, it was only me. Kobe elbows me in the throat. I get ejected, you know, because of what I might do. <laughs> G Ginobili elbowed me in the lip, bust my lip in the game, playing Sacramento versus the Spurs in the playoffs. 
you know, I go back to him, I get ejected with a big lip, and I get all the media coming down to me. I'm, I'm happy about this situation. <laughs> he deserves to get ejected. Did you, did you have any funny interactions with refs? Man, um, actually, I got, I never had problems with the refs. I, they just always ejected me. <laughs> I had problems with the players. I, to this day, the refs see me, they always be like, hey, they come, give me a five or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I never had issues with the ref. But back in the days, how Jordan used to yap at the refs, that's a tech, man. I don't know how they didn't call a tech. Not on mic. Right? They had to call a tech. So I think what they're doing is right. Okay. What I don't like is how soft the, the league was like three, four years ago. I feel like it's more physical you think now. It's gotten tougher. I think it's better now. I think the rest is a little more physical. I can okay. see it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Last thing, big three um, playing this year. Charles Oakley, your coach, right? Yeah. What's that going to be like playing for Oak, you think? He was, he was my, my vet in Chicago okay. when I was a rookie. <laughs> he smacked me in the back of my head one time because I was playing the video games before, before a game. Yeah. Put that video game down. <laughs> <laughs> now, Oak was regarded as pretty much the toughest dude in the league, right? Is that? Yep. That was. He was. Everybody knew not to mess with Oak. Yeah, he was. He, I mean, he, he going to come out. He was strong. He was smart. A really good player. And he, and he was tough. And he didn't really care about what happens on the court. Yeah. Oak was tough. Yeah. Now, you going to have you. Oakley's the coach. Steven Jackson. Y'all going to be probably the toughest team <laughs> in the league. And the big three is physical. I, I know. Right? I heard it's physical, It's man. physical. They're trying to pull me out, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to relax mentally. Now they're going to pull me back nah, in, you man. Gonna, you going to get back <laughs> in it, man. Look, great job, man. Great Thank to you. have you here. Same Good here. luck with the app. Thank you. And everything. The yes. book. Uh, I'm going to definitely get the book. Thank and, you. Thank uh, you. I'm looking forward to reading it, man. So Absolutely. thanks for being in the zone. Thanks a lot. All right. Yeah. All right, back again with one of my favorite episodes of the entire podcast. My man, Jason McIntyre. Back in the building. Knockdown J. What's happening, man? I'm so excited, man. Playoffs are here. I love the playoffs. Yes, yes, yes. Should I'm we get started? Should well. we jump right in? Let's see now, what you got. Now, let me preface this by saying I try not to have many overreactions off one or two games, right? We, we understand that. You? However, <laughs> however, Chris, listen. LeBron's down one nothing. Okay, I'm not making a big deal of it. I still think the Cavs are going to win this series. But Victor Oladipo showing out. If the Pacers win this series and well, knock you out just LeBron, said you don't overreact well, to I, one I'm game. I'm not overreacting, but this <laughs> now is, you got the Cavs losing this is in what the first we do. round. We have debates. Okay. We have discussions. I'll, 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 fan, Listen, I'll play along with if you. If the Pacers win this series, Chris. I think this would be the biggest blemish on LeBron's career, bigger than the finals loss to the Dallas Mavericks. And here's why. At 33 years old, LeBron's going to be runner-up for the MVP this year. He's even got a case to win it. I know you love Harden. Well, We're not going to get gonna into win that. It. He's, he's, he's gonna been be phenomenal. He's gonna Since be the up. trade when they acquired Clarkson and Hill and everybody, we have both said Cavs are going to the finals. How have they played? We have both said the Cavs are going How to the finals. How have they played? They've played fine. They've been, they've been good. Good enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they, they've got home court advantage, you know. They're the fourth seed. Listen, fourth man. seed. They, listen. At the time of the trade, they were like the they third seed. They lost half their team, Chris. But I'm saying, the 76ers peel off 16 straight. I don't think we saw that coming. Bottom line, th this would be the moment where I can no longer engage in any LeBron versus Jordan debates. Not with a LeBron first-round loss this late in his career. I know Jordan lost early in his career when he was 21, And then late in his career, he didn't even make the playoffs. Well, with the Washington Wizards, yeah. are we counting those years? I mean, I mean, he played. Okay, uh, you can count those if you want. I generally don't count. I mean, those. I, I, look, he, Jordan's but the goat. I'm, I'm do just you saying, believe like, this would be the the biggest blemish on no. his career if, if he loses in no. the first round? No, no. This would. There is no way this would be bigger than what happened in the 2011 Finals against the Dallas Mavericks. Okay, That's they fine. were up two one. They had the most talented team in the league. Period. The end. Right. And LeBron James's struggles cost him the championship. He he had an eight point game. He did. This J is the guy. J J. Who, Barea, baby. This is the guy who owns the NBA record for most games consecutively scoring in double figures, and he scored eight points in the NBA Finals. And you said it. At times, J J. Barea was guarding. Oh. So well, that I is. There is no question that that is the one major blemish yeah. on LeBron James' record. To lose in the first round in your 15th year, this is why I've been telling people. When you're the MVP runner-up? 
Who cares who's run, who who is cares? runner up? This two, is one of the best who is runner up three career. years ago. Do you know? No, because nobody cares who the runner up okay. is. It's who wins it. And I've been saying all year, LeBron's been great, unquestionably great. But this is not his best year. Okay. He used to impact the game defensively just about as much as he does offensively. He doesn't yeah. do that anymore. He it's he's still great. But he's not quite what he used to be. So the Dallas losing argument. in your fifteenth round, fifteenth year in the first round, not a big deal. Okay. Doesn't compare so to losing the in the problem. finals here's because you didn't play well. Losing in the finals, he was able to get that stench away from him. They won back-to-back titles after that, and he's gone to the finals every year since he went to the finals. Then he has proven, hey man, that was my one mistake. That was my screw up. I made up for it by winning two more titles, then beating the Warriors. And I haven't. I've been to the finals every year since. So for me. He has erased that Dallas loss. That, to me, is I, you know, all, I, I'm it's all not, uh, I'm not against you on that. lose in the first round, Chris, I don't know that he's going to be able to walk away from because it. It's because it's late he, in his career. Exactly. He may never win another ring He again. may not get to the finals again. That's it's, why But nobody's going to hold that against him. Oh, you my You understand God. that players age. Enough, he is not as good as he was four years Chris, ago. we have spent five years three ago. months on this podcast, LeBron. Finals, LeBron, finals. Can they beat the Warriors? No, can they beat a the Warriors? A lot of that was what? Giving him the benefit of the doubt. Blind faith. Have we seen anything from his team? Not from just LeBron. Do you know Because it's the, about a team. Do you know Michael the, Jordan oh was God. the best player in the world right from the beginning. He stepped in the NBA averaging 28 points on 50% shooting. Right. Great right away. Right. Score 63. Remember when he scored 63 against, against Boston? Yeah, Larry, I don't know yeah, if you I were remember. born back I, then. I was born. Six, yeah. He went out in the first round. They went out in the first yeah, round. LeBron's 33. And, 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 Stop and, with that hold comparison. On, hold on. That is terrible. And Larry Bird said, I think Michael Jordan, I think that's God disguised, disguised as Michael Jordan. Nobody's about to say that about LeBron James in his 15th year. When you're climbing up the hill, it's okay to get knocked he out in the first round. Magic the got knocked out in the first round right after he won the title early in his well, career. He had all, this hold is on, hold LeBron on, on. I'm glad 30, you brought that he up. He had already won a title. Because guess it. who he got knocked out with? Uh, remind me. Kareem, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Abdul okay. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar smack dab in the middle of his prime. Yes, what, 19, he had been the MVP the like, year before, yeah, he, okay. 81. He right. was MVP okay. in the year before. Fine, in his prime. Kareem in his prime. Magic coming off a championship. One of the best players in the world right So you're just going to give LeBron they, a pass here? Is that they, where we're going with They this? go out in the first round. Kareem actually missed the playoffs one year in 1976 in his prime. So let's stop bringing up the stuff. Why? They, they weren't great the players? Pointer. Stop with the 1976 They had it in 81. Yes, they did in 81 when he got knocked out. Got it. So you're saying because I'm not Magic and Jabbar lost. I mean, How I'm just saying. the worst thing ever? I'm, because it's the first round. Losing in the finals. You're about to win a championship. Your first championship. You predicted not five, not, not six. six. And you go okay. out and you let J.J. Barea guard you? Let me quickly... That was the worst. Not let me quickly this. remind you what was said about the Pacers, what their preseason expectations were. Now After we're trading preseason. Paul George, I this hear was preseason. a lottery team. Nobody wants to hear this preseason. A team where... Who's their second best player? Sabonis? They lost Miles one, Turner? They lost one... They won one fewer game or two fewer right? games. I know. Then and that's who LeBron's going to lose to? Now, I, I, LeBron, please don't lose this series. Look, I, I don't, love you, LeBron. I don't. Please don't lose. I this don't series. think he's gonna lose. But I, if and, he does, and, and this will be a blemish. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it won't be a blemish. But to say it'll be the yeah. worst uh, of his career. Okay, are you with hold me? Hold on, hold on. What, what, what was the Cavaliers' defense ranked? This they have 31, year? I believe. 29th. 29, uh, 29, 30 29 teams out of 30. In the 29 out of 30. Yeah. Sorry. We'll edit that 20, out. <laughs> 29 out of 30. I got it. I mean, I think we got to just stop. I mean, no, you, no, you no, think no. There's Bruce 35 no, no. Teams I got in the one league. last thing I want to say. I got one last thing I want to say. We can no longer have legitimate Michael Jordan LeBron debates if LeBron gets bounced in the Why first not? round. Did you, it, it's unacceptable. Okay. I refuse. Just let me ask you a question. Did Mike, I don't want to hear it. Did Michael Jordan ever get bounced in the first round? He did early in his career. Twice, right? Early in I believe it was three times. LeBron, how many years did Michael Jordan play? Uh, 15, 17, 15. something like that. Yeah. LeBron James in his 15th year. We don't hold it against oh Michael my, Jordan. You can't compare oh, 23 oh, versus 33. We don't hold it's mileage, oh, my, my man. Gosh. It's not just so, age. So you don't think it's this hurts? Mileage. Okay, let me let me take it one more step further before and you move I, on. Look, does, I, it, does it hurt the Michael LeBron discussion at all? I mean, right now it's Michael clearly anyway. 
So this does nothing. Losing in the first round, no big deal. That's where you chalk it up at. No, I'm, I no, can't I'm not it. saying that. I'm shocked. I'm just saying for, I'm not saying. I am flat out shocked. I'm not saying it wouldn't be a blemish. But for you to say that, what do people begin with when they talk about why Jordan is the GOAT and LeBron is not? They begin with Dallas, period. Why? LeBron himself knows I can't defend that. No, this first round exit with Rodney Hood, George Hill, Jordan Clarkson, and, and guys Nance, like that, Kevin Love, with the 29th ranked defense in a 48 team league. Cause you, I mean, I'm sorry, 30 team league. Like, look, a blemish, yes. Bad, yes. But worse than not showing up in the finals. Come on, man. No, I, I totally. It, we are as Get out of the zone. Opposed. Get out of the <laughs> zone. <laughs> Move hey, on. listen, I just did an NFL segment on FS1. They have 32 teams in that league. I'm sorry. <laughs> Kill me in the comments, guys. I can't wait. Trust me. All right, moving on, Broussard. All right, is it out of bounds for Joel Embiid? We, we saw what he did after the Game 2 loss. Goes on Instagram stories, drops an F-bomb, blah, blah, blah. I mean, for, to call out the team. Well, in the middle of a series, the organization, in a very, the organization, organization so, in a right, very public so, manner. Can... Chris, I, I know you are president of the Joel Embiid fan club. You have been gassing him up since. Well, he, this is season. he not the man? I mean, you say he's is the he... best player on earth. No, I mean, he's it, like I'm saying the best big man in the, in the league. Best low post seasons. player in the league. Um, I, I just think if I'm the Sixers, I have to call him into a room and be like, yo, we love you, but this has got to stop. Like, chill with the social media. We had just won 17 in a row. That's all wiped out because you just dropped an F-bomb on the Wiped out? Yeah, everything that they've accomplished in the last month is basically rendered what? useless. When you're star... Because of an Instagram yes, post? You're... Well, what's the story today? On every TV show, every website, what's the story? Dwayne Wade. For... No, it's not. It's Joel not, Embiid. No, that's the story. No, it's not. No, Dwayne no, no, Wade is... turned back the clock and beat the Woo! Philadelphia 76. And you no, know what no, the no. second story is? Get Embiid back here. No, no, Get Joel Embiid, Embiid on the is court. the number one story. Oh, stop what, it. what led the shows you were on today? Joel Embiid calling out the franchise. We got the, one of the best young stars in the league. First of all, do you agree with me? It's out of bounds for what El Embiid did. No. Woo! We're off to a good start today, Broussard. You no. think that's cool? Okay. I Don't mean, call look. out the president of FS1 because you're sick one day and you can't play. And they say, Chris, stay home. If Don't I could call drop 23 and 12, then I could do you that. You don't drop 23 and 12 on here? Not quite. That's because I got you in Just checks, 22 son. and 10. I'm locking no. you down. <laughs> no, but look, I, I get where the Sixers are coming from in that, look, we're just trying to protect our man. You know, we, we're thinking long term, right? The process. Yeah. So they're going to err on the side of caution. How much money they give him But if last I'm year? the Philadelphia 76ers, I love this. I love it. This is what I want. I don't want my best player sitting on the side like, yeah, I'm good. I'm sitting out. My face hurts, but I can't play. I'm watching my boys oh, go to battle. Oh, you taking shots at Kawhi Leonard. Oh. No, it's got nothing to do. I like Kawhi. I'm on Kawhi's side. What I'm saying is I want my best player wanting to get yeah, out there and play. You can do that without F-bombing your franchise. Oh, we got a freaking precedent that F-bombs oh, on Twitter. Them. Oh, I'm serious. My. It's a different Dude, world. And you know me. President? I don't even curse. So I don't like the cursing. You but cursed I'm just me saying, before this segment. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying, don't give me that, oh, he dropped an F-bomb. Listen to your radio. Listen to your favorite rapper. Listen to your president. Everybody's dropping F bombs. So this is no. So, big, no. This is enough. Oh my he god. He just wants wow. to get out on the court and play. Okay. Now, if they want to be cautious, that's fine. But I, I love that you, attitude. You just I want the team. him. I, I want him. Like, get me on the court. I get that. I want to win this series. I get that. Tell that to your team. Don't do it in the media. You just backed your team into a corner. Really? Now, yeah, the team has How to now back sit back. into a corner? Shucks, what do we do? It's tied 1-1. We're going to Miami. and Embiid's yelling at us to play him. You if should we play him. What, is he healthy? I yeah. don't know. So isn't this the San Antonio situation? Joel Embiid saying he's healthy. The Spurs say Kawhi's healthy. Uh, no, because Kawhi's doctor oh, says okay, he's fine. not healthy. Kawhi's not going on social media or to the media and saying, let me play. How well, is, they're mean, two completely different okay, personalities. Okay, I, I actually Kawhi, side Kawhi with Kawhi, Kawhi saying quiet. nothing. I love Embiid. I follow him on Instagram. I, I, I just don't get this. I'm to sure me, it's not a good happy thing. About that. I think he follows me as well. <laughs> I, thanks for the, all the Instagram comments, guys. All right, let me take it a no, step. No, but why? I mean, you don't want that attitude. I, I get think, me on the coach. Put me in, coach. 
Okay, you think say Michael to the coach. Jordan? Hold Don't on, say let, it to me, let me tell you. Million people on now, let, let's go back to the goat, the G, the O, the A, the T. Talk about Magic? His second year in the league, Michael Jordan comes back from a broken foot playing the last. They didn't even want him. The Bulls did not want him to play at all because they didn't want to make the playoffs. They wanted to get a draft Tank, pick. Right. And Jordan insisted on playing the last 17 games. And he got him, I think he got him in the playoffs, but he played the last 17 games. He insisted on it. It went public. And guess what? He ended up being the greatest player of all time. Now, that's not going to happen to Joel Embiid, but he will be I an all-time that, great. That's shocking. I, I thought you had Embiid ahead of Jabbar. I love again, that Chris, attitude. We're talking about two different things. Do there's, you not love that attitude? There's. I love that you can go to your coach and say, please, let me play. No, I, I don't mind like you Michael call Jordan. going to public. I Okay, well, we it's disagree There's nothing wrong then. with that. Okay. I, Did I just Muhammad don't like Ali the... talk? I like talk. We're talking team sports and I you like Muhammad talk. Al- You're off your game today. You're off I your like game. talk. Right, we got to move on I'm to the next I'm off my game. You are. How many teams in the NBA? 58? <laughs> <laughs> Number three here. Game. Okay, listen. That, now I know this is one we should agree on. Uh, your boy, Greg Popovich, after another blowout loss to my Warriors, came out and, you know, come on. We know what he's th- – these were shots at Kawhi Leonard when he's talking up LaMarcus Aldridge, sticking up for his teammates and giving everything he's got. It felt like a veiled shot at Kawhi. I, 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 I didn't like what Joel Embiid did. I don't like what Popovich did here. Well, Popovich uh, has to be careful because be on that, he's not dealing with Tim Duncan yes. or Manu Ginobili or Tony Parker. And the Spurs know what is going on with Kawhi Leonard. They agreed they were fine with him getting a second opinion. His group, according to Pablo. Well, why not say medical he team? Keeps saying why that. not show it's, him the respect? Because you know, that's, that's like what I'm his saying. posse. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. It's he needs language. to show them the respect. And, you know, they look, the Spurs were on board with Kawhi going to New York or staying in New York to rehab. They understand why he's not at the games. And Pop did say that in an interview. Well, He's wait, in New now, York rehab and trying to get better. That was during the regular season. But, I mean, when they saw his results, they said, you should stay in New York and rehab. That's what I've been told. But that does not they make sense They have trainers. Why up, wouldn't they want him on the bench? They have the trainers way- up in New York working with him. Spurs trainers working with him why in New, New York? York. But why not on the bench that's where supporting his the team? Are. Is he a part of the team? Look, why I don't think it's that big supported? of a deal. Okay. That he's not. I mean, well, look, for a it'd guy be who's nice up for to have a two hundred million dollar contract, and he hasn't been around for a little while. I mean, it's a guy who was playing three on three with the team, and Tony Parker said he looked great. That none of this smells great to me. None of this seems like a good sign for Kawhi's future in San Antonio. So I, I what just, do you, what do you think is going on? I mean, my guess is the Spurs don't trust him. Kawhi doesn't trust the Spurs. I feel like that's irreparable. I believe we're headed towards some kind of trade. In the offseason, because they're not going to offer him the Supermax. Now, How can they? I don't they? know. I was talking to somebody today that said they probably will still offer him the Supermax. Well, he's not going to turn that because down. Because the Spurs, un- well. Nah. That would be leaving $60 million on he, the table. I don't know that he wouldn't turn it down. I, I don't know that he will turn it down or won't. I'm not sure, but it's a possibility. Just trust me on that. Now, because if he's so offended by these veiled shots by Popovich, I mean, Tony Parker wasn't even veiled. No. And there's some, there's been chatter that, you know, Pop was behind the meeting and Tony Parker and all that. Yep. If Kawhi is offended to the point where you can offer him the money all you want, he still may leave. Right. That's a problem. But what, what? look, they may offer him the Supermax. Try to make it work. I, I got to believe that Popovich will try to make it work. Um, and if it doesn't, then you can trade him you, you to whoever you want. Right, and they have He'll to He'll have with more him. value with right. four or five. No, you sign him for five years, $219 million, and if it doesn't work out, you can trade him because he's locked up for another four or five but years. But can you, after and signing then, the Supermax, don't you have to wait a year before trading him? or is there Even if you wait a year. But okay. you know what I'm saying? Like, you still get enough. Like, he's locked up. Whereas if you trade him now, Kawhi controls the situation. Right. Because anybody who trades for him is going to want to know, okay. are you going to sign we long-term saw last we year LaMarcus Aldridge asked for a trade. Popovich said, oh, well, we can't have that happen. Smoothed it over. 
could we see that again with Kawhi, the way Pop won over? Now, there were no shots in the media to LaMarcus yeah. Aldridge last year. It, it, it really all depends on Kawhi, and that's why I said Popovich has to be careful. I, he's taken some veiled no. shots. At least they appear to be veiled shots. There have been some leaks, anonymous sources, out of the Spurs organization. Which doesn't usually happen. No, <laughs> and so that – it, it, it has rubbed Kawhi the wrong way. If it, it, it depends on how much. Can he, can let, he move on Let me on hit from you it? with a hypothetical trade if you're interested. We know the Cavs could make a run at Kawhi, right? Possible for the Lakers. We know the Celtics have as, many, as much assets as anybody. Let, uh, a hypothetical I saw on social media, probably from one of the commenters here uh, on your great podcast, is the Celtics, would they give up in some kind of package, Jason Tatum, for Kawhi Leonard, obviously not straight up, but in a package, Tatum and, I don't know, Rozier or Smart and Picks or whatever it is. But would you part with Jason Tatum in exchange for Kawhi Leonard? I'm going to come on record right now. I would not part with Jason Tatum. That's not saying he's better than Kawhi, but I'm telling you, as a 19, 20-year-old this year, Tatum has been unbelievable. 43% from deep, 13, 5, and 1.5 and assists per game. By the way, Kawhi in his third year in the league well, didn't look, put up those know, numbers. We know. We, I know, we but know. And, and I'm going to add I mean, to this, and I don't want people to take this the wrong way. Kawhi Leonard is, was an MVP candidate last year. He also has been playing for the best coach in the league in a system that has just been tremendous. That's not a knock on Kawhi, but how is he going to do just go into another team instantly, and is he going to still be the best two-way player in the league? 25 and, and, and 5 and, you know, 40% from threes. Can he do that off the injury? I, I don't know. Well, the only he, – he'll be great wherever he goes if, if he's healthy. Um, Jason Tatum, the only thing that gives me a little hesitation is the injury situation with Kawhi. Not that he won't come back, but just going forward, how much am I going to be able yeah. to count on him? That's the only thing. Um, this is a guy I would, who's if never I'm, played if I'm seventy-five Boston, games in a season. Yeah, I would much rather give up a Gordon Hayward. You no, know, that's not happening. Jalen Brown. Would you part I with like him? Jalen Brown. He's a, lot. a good defender. And, and good the thing is, shooter. Kawhi, you know, plays the three. So you still, you know, you you still got your backcourt of Kyrie and Jason T- or no, Jalen Brown. So it, it it's uh, that's a tough one. Okay, let me toss out I Lakers. Know, but I, I, I would I would do though if I'm if I'm Celtics. My first trade offer would be like, I'd rather give up Gordon Hayward and Sacramento's draft pick, which will be mm-hmm. I just probably find it be hard lottery to believe next the year. The Spurs are going to take a guy coming off a massive injury. All right, let me go Lakers real quick before we wrap up. Kawhi Leonard or Paul George? If you're the Lakers, you get Paul George for nothing, sign him in free agency, or you got to give up a, maybe an Ingram, a Kuzma, Alonzo, probably two of those and a pick to get Kawhi. Uh, for me, again, I, I know Kawhi's a great player. I'm I like not diminishing. Kawhi better as a player than Paul but, George. Yeah, but you're right. You have to give up a yeah, lot. Now, and I don't. I don't the blow question up my question is, do I need all that? Because if I get LeBron and Kawhi, that's pretty good. I mean, do I need Julius Randle and and you know, heck, even Lonzo Ball at that point? You know, or whoever, okay, me, whatever. Let young me give you the Kuzma, devil's advocate. Whoever you devil's advocate. Give LeBron's 33. You said he's been. Oh, you'd be going for it. He's awful defensively? Are you saying awful? Is that good? Uh, Bad? He, not, he, he hasn't been his, himself. And he Kawhi's was a superb defender. And Kawhi's coming off the mysterious injury. So, if I'm the Lakers, I would prefer Paul George for nothing. As in, you I, keep Lonzo that. Ingram, that's, that's Josh Hart, and all that. That's something to think about, yeah. And, and you got Because you get to keep your guys. And, and, and even if you don't need them because George may play a similar position, they're assets. And you can move. So, I'm not mad. That's something I would really, if I'm Magic Johnson, Rob Palenka, just have to sit yeah. down and really I, think about I can't about. wait till and the look, Bucks. And look, we're talking about LeBron. I mean, what if LeBron wants to stay in Cleveland or go, <laughs> el- or go elsewhere and you're looking at getting – I know you got so many sources, so you know. And we got the idea. Kawhi, and you, Kawhi and Paul George could be a possibility Now, that together. to me is super intriguing. I mean, you got two of the best – Five wing players in the league? That's nasty. Hey, I can't wait for the Bucks to lose game two so we can talk about Giannis forcing his way out of Milwaukee. We'll save that for next week. Look, yeah, Giannis don't, don't need to be forcing his way out of Milwaukee because if they don't win this series, Giannis just needs to look in the mirror. Oh, God, you're blaming Giannis when Eric Bledsoe can't play. All right, we're no, off I'm not the, we're blaming. Off the I'm just saying at some point you got you to gotta win. You got to carry somebody above where you're supposed to go. You got to elevate people. Yeah. That's what that's I do what on this podcast. And he's tremendous. That's why you bring me on to elevate matters. Yeah. 
I bring you on for comic relief. Oh, yes. Th yes. On that note, <laughs> we're out of here. Another episode of In The Zone. I hope you enjoyed Knockdown J. Of course, the top five and the great interview with Meta World Peace. Go to Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, download us, give us five stars, leave us a comment. Feel free Something to rip, positive. rip on my man, Jason McIntyre, <laughs> right here. And we out of here. We'll catch you next week. <laughs>